WTRU, Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Hi, Natalie. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good, thank you. I'm very glad to talk to you. I know that you'll shine some light on this for me. Um, I get really excited when it's time to listen to certain uh, evangelists, um, televangelists, um, John Hagee in particular. Um, I've read one of his books. I'm about to read Jerusalem Countdown, but I'm not sure if I'm going in the right direction here. Am I learning from him the right way, or is he, is he able to rightly divide the word, in your opinion? Well, in my opinion, he is not. In fact, he is a, uh, a false teacher on many, many different counts. He is uh, not rightly dividing the word of truth. He is wrongly dividing the word of truth. He's a classic word of faith teacher. Uh, I wrote about that in Christianity in Crisis. There will be an updated version of that, an expanded 21st century edition of that that comes out next year. Uh, But he is uh, consistently saying things which are directly in opposition Uh, with Scripture. Again, as I mentioned, on many different counts. Let me give you just one example. Here's John Hagee talking about the fact that, in his opinion, Jesus didn't come uh, to be, nor claim to be, Messiah. I'm delighted to present my latest book, In Defense of Israel. This book will expose the sins of the fathers and the vicious abuse of the Jewish people. In Defense of Israel will shape Christian theology. It scripturally proves that the Jewish people as a whole did not reject Jesus as Messiah. It will also prove that Jesus did not come to earth to be the Messiah. It will prove that there was a Calvary conspiracy between Rome, the high priest and Herod to execute Jesus as an insurrectionist too dangerous to live. Since Jesus refused by word and deed to claim to be the Messiah, how can the Jews be blamed for rejecting what was never offered? Read it in this shocking expose in defense of Israel. Well, what he claims to be a shocking expose uh, ought to be a shocking revelation of his own inability to read the Bible. For him to say, Jesus refused by word and deed to claim to be the Messiah Therefore, how can Jews be blamed for rejecting what was never offered? Almost defies rationality, much less defying an ability to read Scripture. It is truly tragic that Zionist leaders like John Hagee place far more emphasis on returning Jewish pilgrims to the land of Israel than in turning Jewish people to the Lord. When he says, let us put an end to Christian chatter, and these are his words, that all the Jews are lost and can't be in the will of God until they convert to Christianity. Let me say that again. This is his words. Let us put an end to this Christian chatter, that all the Jews are lost and can't be in the will of God until they convert to Christianity. Incredibly, what he's doing here is he's taking the onus off the Jewish community and placing it squarely on the Jewish Christ. He says, and listen to this, this this, this is chilling. He says, if Jesus refused by his words or actions to claim to be Messiah to the Jews, then how can the Jews be blamed for rejecting what was never offered? Indeed, he says the Jewish people wanted Jesus to be their Messiah. And listen to this. But Jesus absolutely refused. The Jews were not rejecting Jesus as Messiah. It was Jesus who was refusing to be Messiah to the Jews. Now, anyone who has read through the Gospels even once, knows full well that Jesus emphatically contradicted the words of John Hagee. Who can forget the emotionally charged words as Jesus was walking away from the temple and he said, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who killed the prophets and stoned those sent to you, how Often I have longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, 
but you were not willing. Or as John explained it, he came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. It was the Jews who rejected Jesus. It was not Jesus who rejected the Jews. To suggest, as Hagee does, that Jews are somehow entitled to building settlements in Gaza and yet excluded from the blessed salvation of the gospel might well be regarded as the height of anti-Semitism. Worse yet, I think uh, his uh, preoccupation with herding Jews into the land, when in his view, two-thirds of them herded into the land, some say the world, will soon die in disbelief, soon die in unbelief, in some kind of horrific Holy Land Holocaust, is, I think, untenable. There is no warrant biblically for suggesting that Jews in the 21st century are going to suffer for the sins of the first century Jews. There's simply no warrant. In fact, the Bible explicitly speaks out against these kinds of sentiments. But the bottom line here is that he is saying something so grotesquely unbiblical, so grotesquely against what the Bible emphatically subscribes to. Again, let me say, John clearly in the gospel contradicts John Hagee. So you have to decide, is John the apostle right or is John the Hagee right? John says he came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. So to say what Hagee says in light of the very clear teaching of Scripture is simply unconscionable. And the only way a guy like this can get away with this is people don't know their Bibles. And therefore, they cannot test what he says in light of Scripture. And this guy, with his rhetoric is leading people down a blind alley. Not only that, but if he is to be believed, he's keeping people from reaching out to their Jewish friends with the gospel. Now, I have a bunch of Jewish friends that have not converted. One just was in my home, staying in my home. I am never going to tell him that the gospel is not for him because he's Jewish. The absolute truth is exactly the opposite. More could be said. I'm going to stay in studio for an extra hour. If you're hanging on, I'll stay with you. Just give me a call, 888-ASK-HANK.